Hi again, everybody. This video is sponsored by Contribution from Anonymous, and here's her story. Hi, Ali. Congratulations on 600 videos. That is awesome. I watch all your videos, and you do an amazing job. You've done several videos for me over the past year, and last, and last week I promised more stories, so here we go. I divorced my narcissistic husband last year after 12 years of marriage and 17 years together. You did a video for me recently about the covert physical abuse that he subjected me to. Nice job on that, by the way. This story is about how he used triangulation to control me. In, in the spring of 2001, my boyfriend at the time and now my ex-husband proposed marriage. We were dating. We started dating in 1998 and we were in our mid-twenties and had been together for about three and a half years at that point. I accepted his proposal and was excited about spending the rest of our lives together. After a few months after we got engaged, we started looking at houses to buy while we planned the wedding. He was sharing a two-bedroom apartment at the time with his younger brother, who was 23 years old. When we started looking at houses, my fiancé made it a point to mention that we needed to buy a house that was big enough so his brother could live with us for a while. I thought that was odd because I figured that once we moved in together that his brother would simply get his own place or get another roommate. Their father had passed away several months earlier so I had empathy for, the, for their loss and didn't want to be selfish. My ex and his brother are close and they had been living with their father before he passed away. I guess I felt like it was a lot to ask of them to have to live apart since they have never lived apart before and because the passing of their father had been so recent. So I agreed to let my soon-to-be brother-in-law live with us for a while. I went along with it because I figured he would want to move out, of, out on his own at some point since he was getting older. Boy, was I wrong. He ended up living with us for nine years. When my brother-in-law turned 32, I finally told my husband that he needed to ask his brother to move out. At that point, I had reached the end of my rope and couldn't take it anymore. For nine years, I had been cooking, cleaning, shopping for three people, and I was tired of having no privacy. I felt like a hired hand, not like a wife. It really took a toll on our marriage and on our sex life. I was never really comfortable having sex with my husband when my brother-in-law was in the house. Most of the time, we would wait until his brother was out for the night, or we just had to be really quiet in the next room. I was never really comfortable with that. So basically, he turned his brother into a child. That's what it sounds like. That's how married people with kids have sex. I tried to be understanding as I could with my husband wanting his brother to live with us. But after nine years, I just couldn't do it anymore. I was so angry and resentful, and I didn't like feeling that way. I had to convince, I really had to convince my husband that it would be better for all of us if his brother moved out. After some arm twisting, I finally got my husband on board with asking his brother to move out. We told him together. A few months later, his brother-in-law didn't, my brother-in-law did move out. It was, that at, it was at that point that I believed my relationship with my husband would improve, but it didn't. It got worse. Of course it did, because he was setting up like this almost like childhood he had. Like, I don't know if he was turning his brother into his son, or he was trying to, or he was trying to relive his childhood, turn you into his mother, and him and his brother can have this giant playhouse. He started going out more and more while I sat while I sat at home. He was less interested in spending time with me. He started sleeping on the sofa more often. I was frustrated because I couldn't understand why he was treating me like that. I thought maybe he resented me for pressuring him to ask his brother to move out. I couldn't get him to talk to me about it. When I would try to talk to him, he would just shut down by getting violent and punching holes in the wall or breaking stuff like a child who lost his who lost his buddy. In 2010, shortly after my brother-in-law moved out, my husband got a new job. A few months later, he befriended a co-worker at his new job. This new friend was a single woman in her mid-twenties. We were in our mid-thirties. I didn't think much of it in the beginning, but the more I got to know her, the less I liked her. She would date guys, cheat on them, and then dump them. She did it twice to the same guy. She even dated a guy from work and broke up with him. I made the mistake of telling my husband that I didn't understand why she was behaving like that and I didn't under and I didn't think it was very nice. 
I think I said something like, I wouldn't treat a guy like that. And he got super defensive and told me that I shouldn't judge her and that I shouldn't talk about his friends like that. Well, there's a red flag that he wanted to fuck her. I backed off and apologized for speaking my mind. Still, I had this uneasy feeling that I shouldn't trust this woman. I should have paid more attention to those feelings. You'll understand why in a minute. In June 2012, we moved into a new house. I didn't want to move, but he pressured me, and I finally agreed. Normally, when people sell a house and then buy a house, they move directly from the old property to the new property. In our case, we couldn't, we couldn't move into the new house until one week until one week after we moved out of the old house. So technically, we were homeless for a week. Money really wasn't a problem in our marriage, so the plan was just to stay in a hotel for a week, store our stuff, and then move in a week later. The week before we had to move out of our old house, he tells me we are going to stay at his friend's apartment. This is the woman he befriended at work. Her name is Sarah. I really didn't want to stay at her place. I thought it was really weird that a woman just offer up her apartment to a male co-worker and his wife. I pushed back, but I gave in because he made me feel like I was being ungrateful. I told him that I was upset because of the way he had handled it. He should have, I said he should have spoken to me about it, spoken to me first before telling her that we would stay there. I really put, I really felt put on the spot and didn't have a choice and felt like I didn't have a choice in the matter. He said it was too late to back out because he would just look like a jerk to his friend. So we stayed there for a week and then moved into the new house. Two days after we closed on the new house, we went out of state for four days to go partying with some friends and left me alone to unpack and set up the new house. I was so pissed, he didn't even tell me about the trip until the day we closed on the new house. When, when, he, got back, when he got back, he informed me that his friend Stara would be staying in our guest room for the summer. Apparently, she needed a place to stay because she was going back to grad school and was not going to renew the lease on her apartment. Her lease was up at the end of June, and she couldn't move into the dorm until the end of August, so she had nowhere to go. Apparently, Sarah told my husband of her problem one day, and they were at work, and my husband just went ahead and offered up our guest room without discussing it with me first. The two of them were always having little talks at work and making decisions that affected me without talking to me first. They would go out to dinner, go shopping together, go to bars, and do all types of stuff. They were total BFFs. I tried not to feel jealous about that, but I couldn't help it. That behavior used to really piss me off. When he told me that she was moving in and would be staying for two months, I nearly lost my mind. I was so pissed, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I remember saying something to him along the lines of, we just got your brother out, now you're moving someone else into our house. He told me I was being unreasonable and that it was too late to tell her no. It's always too late. It's never too late to reverse the narcissist decisions. They'll always say, it's too no, it's not, motherfucker. It's not too late to not stay at her house. It's not too late. It's never too late. She did end up moving out at the end of August, thankfully. But from that point on, it just got worse. Over the next two years, he helped her move three times, always doing favors for her and hanging out at her apartment. I thought it was totally inappropriate for a married man to, to be hanging out at a single woman's apartment watching movies or whatever they were doing. After all, they do work together for the same employer. I'll admit it, I was jealous of all the attention he was giving her. If I ever needed anything from her, from him, he couldn't be bothered to help me, but if she needed anything, he would run right over there. I felt like I was in competition with her, and I didn't like feeling that way. I felt so much shame over my jealousy and insecurity. I, I couldn't prove it, but I really had the feeling he was cheating on, on me with her or someone else. Turned out my instincts were right on. I never found proof that he was cheating with her, but when I moved out at the end of 2014, I did find a receipt for a romantic bed and breakfast with my husband's name and the name of some woman I had never heard of before. I did end up finding out who she was, and it turns out that my husband's other friends knew all, knew all about her, and none of them said anything to me. In fact, I questioned one of his flying monkey friends about my, my husband's new girlfriend, and the person 
actually told me that the woman was really nice. It was then I knew I did the right thing moving out and that I would be going no contact with all my husband's friends and family. So here are my questions, Holly. <clears throat> Do you think my ex-husband was triangulating me with his brother first and then later his friend? I know from studying narcissism that narcissists often use third parties as a buffer or a distraction to throw their primary trial partner off their trail. Narcissists don't like interacting with people one-on-one -on -one because they fear int intimacy. I now believe that is exactly what is going on and why he kept inserting or si inserting other people into our relationship and why he got angry with me when I objected or pushed back on his behavior. What are your thoughts about what I just described? Am I really some jealous person or did he give me reason to feel that way? Was I being unreasonable when I raised objections in these situations or do you think I have the right to be angry or resentful? Was I being triangulated or was it all in my head? I know I reacted badly to what was happening at the time and I'm not proud of the things I did or said out of anger. Still, I can't help feeling that that way he treated me wasn't right and I think I deserve better. I do realize that I didn't have to marry him or stay in the marriage. I could have left sooner if I wasn't happy. So I feel a lot of this is on me. Thank you for reading my story. You're so good at analyzing these situations. I look forward to hearing your comments. Your husband was triangulating you, but not to make you jealous. He was triangulating you because he wants to live as a child. He wants to live as an adolescent teenager. He proved that with his brother. He proves that with his dating habits. No guy is hanging out with some single girl's apartment. Let me ask you something. Is this girl good looking? Is she into him? Because if she was 400 pounds fat and ugly, I guarantee you he wouldn't give two flying. He'd give zero fucks about helping her move, where she lived, what her fucking problems were. It's always funny. These friends are always good looking or their type, isn't it? They're never 400 pounds, toothless and ugly, are they? No. What he did with, with him and your brother is he was living as an adolescent. And he actually set you up as his mommy figure. Okay, to take care of him and his brother while they went out and played and ran the town like teenagers. When his brother was gone, his play buddy was gone, that wasn't what was it. You know, that's not what made him happy. So then he started looking for women at work. Setting up the same thing. Try to move her in. Didn't really work out. Because he's looking to triangulate so he can still live his teenager lifestyle. Punching walls, flipping out. That's what kids do. That's what children do. That's what teenagers do. He wasn't triangulating you out of jealousy. He was triangulating you to make you into a mother to make you into a homemaker. That's all he wanted was a little June Cleaver homemaker who was going to cook and clean and wash his dirty socks. Okay, well, he goes out and plays with his friends and then comes home and you feed him and cook him and duck him in the fucking bed. Understand why you were being triangulated. You weren't being triangulated out of jealousy for sex. You were being triangulated so he could be a teenager and you could be set up as a mommy homemaker. That's what he wanted. He wanted a mommy homemaker, not a wife. And that's why what happened happened. So, thank you again for your contribution and thank you for your story. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you have if you, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a narcissist you'd like to expose or a topic you'd like me to cover, you know what to do with the PayPal and my email links in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.